Welcome to You Can Do It. Today we're going to be working on the Husqvarna 357. I'm going to show you about the differences between the small bar mount and the large bar mount. Just once I've described what the differences are, then I'm going to go, the second part of the video will be about how I modify a large bar to fit the small bar mount. I want to actually put um, a longer bar on it because I think I've only ever seen 18 inch uh, small mount bars. I think you can get a 20 inch, but I've never seen one around. But if you want to put like a 24 on here, so this one, this one, I'm going to do a series of stripping this down and modifying it, uh, muffler mod, um, uh, gasket uh, removal, etc. So this will be pepped up, and then it'll, it'll easily run a 24 inch bar. And I'm not exactly going to be cutting um, 24 inch logs. Uh, it's more for like um, bucking and things like that. It's just a lot easier. So, so stick with us, and uh, <clears throat> we'll go into this video. So the first thing is, what is the difference between the small and the large mount? So if I take this off, right, okay, excuse me, this is filthy. It's kind of a full strip down, but I thought I'd do this video, video now. So you've got your, your two studs here. Now, with the small mounts and the large mounts, the small mounts have got uh, eight millimeter. They're basically M8s, so eight millimeter, or a little tad under eight millimeters. And the large bar mount, has uh, a nine millimeter, a nine millimeter uh, shank on it here because um, they have a nine millimeter groove in the bar. So you can't, if you put a large mount bar on that, it's going to be flopping around. And I've got two bars here. I'll show you those in a minute. Um, and then the ma other main difference is it's going to be the oiler. Where is the oiler positioned? And also here your adjuster. So, so let's get back to two bars. So this bar here is the one I've, I've picked up to put on here. They were selling these cheap actually, so I bought, I picked up one of these. This is a 24 inch large mount. Now the large mount is um, generally described as a D009 with Oregon. And then the small mount is a K095. So that's small, that's large. Okay, so if you have a quick look here, if I just take this out of the packet. Okay, so this is out of the packet there now. So I've actually put a mark there because I've been trying to look at the way the, the oiler is, but um, this part is going to show you the difference and then I'll show you how we're going to actually modify this so it fits and, and the modifications that we'll do to make this fit. It's not going to be sort of a, a budget and scarper type approach. It's going to be done professionally so that if you want to use this as a running working saw, you can do. We're going to do this a professional way so that if you're using this as a working saw, it's going to be easy to, 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 to adjust the bar, take the bar off whatever things like that okay back to the bar so the first thing you can see if we put these two on top of each other you can see immediately look that the holes are in completely different places yeah so you can't just stick the bar straight on because the, the holes are in the different places so the, fir the first thing is obviously this is 8.2 and this they say is not is uh, nine but actually I've had my verniers on it, I've had my calipers on it a lot. That's 9.2 there. 9.3 there. So a 9mm, a 9mm sleeve or something will slide in there, there perfectly. So we know we need to, we're going to have to elongate these holes for them to fit on. And the other one, which is very important, is this is the oiler look so the oiler hole here if we go from from the edge obviously this is with the smaller groove so do the oiler from the edge it's 11.44 and if we do here Seventeen point four two. So basically, without doing too much, sorry, you can see that if you try to put that bar on one, it's not gonna. <laughs> one, it's gonna be floppy in here. Look. Let's try and put it on. First thing is, look, far too much movement there. Second thing is, look, the adjuster. The adjuster doesn't go. It doesn't fit in that hole there. And the third thing is, the oiler is is way too high. The oiler is going to be way too high, so that little dot was where the oiler would be on the other side. 
so that, so you won't get any oil. So you can't just stick that on and run it. Even if you if you elongate this and put this straight on here, you'll just fry your chain because there's not going to be no oil in it. So we're going to have to make that oil hole down to there. And I'll go through all that when we do it. So that you can see the main difference then between the big and the, the small chains is the, the size of the bolts, the position of the adjuster and the oil hole. So once we've solved those, then we can put this bar, will fit like this bar here and this bar will fit on. So there are your major differences and this video does not cover any other saws other than the Husqvarna mount. Yeah, you can put the steel one and things like that. I'm not, this is just purely Husqvarna to Husqvarna, okay? So stick with us for this next bit of the video where I'll show you how I'm gonna how I'm gonna mark this one up to, to, to sort of change its shape and how exactly we're gonna go about it. So the first thing first is I need to mark out where I need to grind these um, grind these holes. I need to make them more oval. So we need to take a print from here. So let me get some paper and I'll be back. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark out where these where these holes are so I can overlay them. So I've got a bit of paper here in this, my kids' drawing box. I'm going to stick that on there. I just want to do that, that first centre line there, and that will become clear why in a second. Now, if you've got a ball, hat, ball pin hammer, you can just tap around that and that will cut that out. I haven't got a ball pin with me, but what I do have is a ball bearing. I'm going to stick the ball bearing in there, and I'm going to tap that with a hammer, and that should cut it out. So I'll need two hands for that, unless I can set up a little tripod. Bear with me. Okay, so put a piece of paper there. I run my hand like that. It's a bit like the old days when we used to make gaskets like this. When we... So you put the ball bearing in there. I don't know whether this hammer's big enough. Yep, yeah, that's cutting it in there. So if I do that, So cut through the paper, and I'm just going to tap it on the end there. There I look. Let's pop that one off. I'll just do the same on the other end. And we have a perfect print of the. Now it makes sense why I'm doing this one first in a minute. Okay, there you go, look at that. Printed that out nicely. That fits up there. So, take that one out there. Now if we go over to this one, well, you can put this, if we put this one on top of here, right? Well, you see, now the reason that I printed the bigger one out was because if I'd have printed it, if I stamped it out on the smaller one, when I put it over here, I don't know where, where the center is because it's too, it's where the edges are. But with this, look, I can, I can get that pretty much in the centre, yeah, a little bit on each side, whatever it is, a millimetre. Now, where's my little, roughly where the hole is, put one hole there, look, yeah, that's that hole, and then where's the oil the hole on this side, is there, look. So, funny enough, I've got a smaller ball there in there, there we are, one, Two, okay, that, and that goes in the oiler. Okay, that. So look, I've stamped that out, and that just shows you how close we are on the edges there when we have to grind that, um, grind it down. So now we have got a print here. This is of the slot of the large mount, and these are the two. These are the two. The, the holes that I need for the oiler adjuster on the small mount. So if we take this off now, and then what we can do, because we've got the right gap there, we can lay that in there perfectly in the right place. Now, you've got a choice. You can try and just overlay that on there, but that's gonna cause a lot of chaos, because you've got, look, you're gonna have your holes like this, which means what you're gonna do with this going to make a mess so what we're going to do with this is we're just going to elongate these holes down so what in actual fact we're doing is we're shifting it all up a little bit yeah 
So if we put that, so that's there, and then again, that's why we printed out this, stamped out this bigger one, because we can get it exactly right. Yeah. Right, so what we can do, let me go and get a pen. Okay, so if we just we put a little bit of a red line there, right in the middle, so that's the middle this way. Yeah, when we put, put this over here, like that, can you see? I don't know whether I need to get that more. Okay, it's a bit, so you see there, look, we can get that in the middle, 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 so we know exactly. So that just shows you that, look, I'd loosely, you might think this is all a bit, a bit profy to do all this, or a bit of a waste of time, should I say, but actually look, so that shows you, I did, I tried it as best I could before, just visually look, and that's how far I, I got that oiler, yeah? So now I've got that, we can get it exactly right here in the groove, and then I've got that mark there, so it's in the middle, so if I do that, I'll colour that all in. Do the same there. And there. So then what we've got, if we take that off, <laughs> you know exactly so we've got, I've got to grind that down a long way on there. And the most important one is this little hole here. So that shows you exactly where the oiler needs to go. I'll do the same on the other side. I don't need to do it on the other side for those, but I do need to do it for that oiler. This is a indelible or permanent marker. And then we have got that um, all there. So that's my little template. That's a handy little template to have. So, then if I turn this over, I think yeah. so let's see, that's another one where I, I sort of roughly guess, where, roughly try to get it with visually. So remember we put a little mark here in the middle. It needs to go there, doesn't it? Put that there. So she's, okay. Idea there. There, and see, see, that wasn't too bad on that side, but look at that. So we know exactly where that's got to go. What we're going to do now is we're going to get a file or a bit on the end of my drill, um, a burr, and I will uh, bore that out either side. And then with there, we're going to get a punch. In fact, I'll do that now. Put a punch in the centre. Then we know exactly where we are. Okay. Put some light on here. Yeah, it's in the middle. We'll do the one on the other side. Middle there. Oh, look at that. Quite good, these little uh, punches. Right. So we've got that center, pon center punch to drill out. That one center punch. So we'll drill that one out first. And we'll drill that one out. And then we're gonna have to look down here. You can see down there. Uh, it's very difficult to see for you guys. Let me see the hole there. But you see it's there. So what I can try and do is drill down and connect up to the other hole. Let's try it. First of all, let me pull out this one and the other one and file this in, file that out like that. Okay, let me get on. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, guys, I just want to show you how I'm actually going to make these slots. Look, I've done that side there. Um, so I'll take the jigsaw and I've just jigsawed in um, as best as I can there. And then I'll finish it off with just a burr on a drill there. I mean, if you haven't got one of those, you just have to use a, a round file. But look, that's made quite a nice job of it. So that's that one done. And now I'm just going to finish off this one here. And then on the next stage, we'll uh, start drilling this hole out. So I've done the other one. So 
the great thing about our little template, we put our template on there, look. Perfect. There, look, all lines up. So now I've just got to start. Yep, yeah, she's good to go. So then I'm going to send, I'm going to drill that centre hole out there. Now, obviously, when you drill that, you've got to be very careful because this is only very, this is only one thin plate. And you don't want to go right the way through. So I'm just going to drill a centre hole in there and then put a bigger drill on there because it's going to have a, a narrower taper. So let me just start on that and I'll, I'll come okay, back. Okay, look. We're, drill, we're drilling this out. Now, I want to make sure, I've used my, my vernier calipers to get the depth. So look, I use my vernier in there, I use the tail, to get how, how deep that is. Uh, excuse for the light. So now, I'll put it in there, look. As you can see, look, I've still got light coming under there, so I've got to go a bit deeper yet. So, let me drill that a little bit deeper. They're both the same depth. So now what we need to do is we need to put a drill and drill through like that. Now this is going to be very delicate because if you bust the drill in there, then it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a dodgy situation. So we're then going to have to hold hold this up like that and drill down through there on an angle to meet those two holes. I'm just using <laughs> actually using my um, my ski ski set up here for sharpening our skis but it's working all right I don't want, don't want to take all this off and then put the big vise on so let me get a little drill and I'll start trying to drill down through there I've got a really small drill here look and I've already seen that um, where that hole is there the it actually goes down beneath that hole so to get the right angle I put a little bit of a mark there look you see and I know when I'm drilling exactly, I need to be on that red line. You've got a little tiny way to go to get through to that. So I'm going to try and drill that really carefully because if I snap the drill bit in there, then I'm in big trouble. So I'll be back and in a second. through because I've got oil, all the oil's come down in there. All the cut, I put a little bit of uh, oil on there just to lubricate. So that's gone through there. So the drill bit's gone through between the two. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to try and go for a a bigger, a slightly bigger drill bit, it's, it, and um, just so I can, it's not, I don't have a pressure build up there. So let me, I'm just going to try and drill with a bigger drill. Now this could be dangerous because this is where the, the drill bit will catch on these edges. I tried a, a bigger drill in there, and it's just, it was just too dangerous because it's going to snap. So what I've done is I've got two holes. I put one hole down there, look, and then I've got another hole that goes in there. I've got two holes from there to there, just so that it'll, it, so I've got enough flow of oil. Okay, I mean, if you take, take that out, there's two holes there, look. So what's left now then is to plug that hole. Otherwise obviously the oil will come up there and then piss out of that hole. So how are we going to plug that hole? I mean, you could put some weld on there or something, but I'm just going to try and find some sort of plug to put in there. So it might even be JB Weld or something. Um, but let me uh, work out a plan for that. And I will be back. So there basically, I mean that profile there, there and there, is the profile. If we take our, put our template on there. Oh, perfect. We have a perfect setup. Oh, back in back in the uh, in the house now. So Obviously, you can see straight away that the we even though this all clamps up tight against the against against this plate here, the only rubber we've got here is along to seal is along there. So that rubber will go basically along here in a line, which basically means the oil is going to be able to come out of the oiler here, and it will come out into there. So we have to actually plug plug this hole here, so that we end up with the the same profile here. As you can see, that hole is above that hole there. At the moment, it's side by side. So I'm just going to have to plug that. So I've basically made a quick decision. I'm going to try and show you how you can do all this without actually getting out the welder and welding this up. So we're going to use JB Weld to um, fill this up and plug that hole there. If we put this bar back on here, look, which fits a treat, and it fits in the adjuster, look, lovely. But if we tip this up a bit now you can see there you can see the oiler in that hole 
so the oil would come down into that into that hole now we clamp tight here but there is a chance it could then drip down into here or fill this all up with oil and oil oil will come out here what we're going to do is we're going to fill this fill this top bit here so that it fits right okay so we've got our bar here so what i've already made i've made some plugs just a bit of mod bit of clay for my daughter's stuff these that way around It'll go in there a lot. And then that's fine, because if I fill that all up with JB Weld, then um, I'll probably have to, to grind, uh, drill it out so it's circular again, but that's going to be easy enough. I'm going to put some tape over these so that I don't fill that up. And then I'll do these at a later date with the JB Weld. So let's just get these two done first. Okay, so I'm going to get myself some JB Weld and I'll mix that up. And I'll put it up there. So this way, I mean, yeah, you can weld that. If you've got a welder, go and do it. The only trouble is some people don't have a welder. So I'm just showing you how you can do it without the welder. Okay, I'll, I'll be This back. has arrived in the post. Just metal epoxy. Okay, look, I've just cut a little bit of plastic, a plastic lid there. And I've bent that bit of plastic over. And that fits in the groove. Yeah, look. You can see. We'll cover that. We'll cover that hole. So now I can fill that up with um, epoxy as well. So I can now do that hole, that and that. Put it on my ski <laughs> ski stand so that I know it's pretty level. Okay, let me mix up some epoxy. We'll let that set, and then we'll, um, we'll we'll sand that flat. I just used a chisel there. And I just scraped off as best I could. So we'll let that set now. Okay, the next day now. So that's dried. That's dried. I've just been using, uh, giving it flat there, you see, just to clean that off. Clean that off. This is this will take this out. And I did actually, in the evening, put another one on the side there. So I'm going to rip all this off, clean it all up, and I'll come back and we can see what, what we're left with. So push those up. That's come up really well. So I used the flat edge of a Stanley knife blade just to clean those up. Uh, that's all nice and flat. Um, I've, I've made those uh, circular, so that's uh, that's good to go. And what I did do is I bored down there with a bigger drill bit, just so that I could actually put some bigger holes between there. So one side is with the bigger holes, and the other side is normal. So I'll just see where that make, how that how that uh, affects with the oiling. So one side, if it oils better on one side than the other. And I know that uh, I need to make bigger holes between these, between these two here. I've put a little bit of a chamfer on the side that's beneath the oiler, in, um, because of the because of the way the the bar adjuster mechanism works. Just a little bit of a chamfer, so just just so it doesn't catch on an edge and push these push these out. But if you can notice as well, look, I've got a little file before I before I put the epoxy in, and I just put a little edge. On each side just so that's got something to bind to otherwise you've got a risk of that just pop these the epoxy just popping straight out so that looks good so there you've got a small bar mount on a large bar so uh, the only thing is that I need to make, get these spaces for here just so that uh, it doesn't rattle around but that will fit on the saw as it is um, so we're, we're getting there and that is uh, it's lovely it's all flat so when that when the rubber goes over there for the oiler, that should all seal, and you won't get oil pissing down, all down here. So and as I said, one side has got a slightly bigger bore than the other side. So uh, we should see. So this top side will probably should oil it better or easier than that side. But this might be fine. I don't know. Let's see. Let's get get it mounted with a chain, and uh, cut it cut it through some logs and see what happens. Okay, we're back at the workbench now. All part of our 375 XP rebuild. But this is a 357 XP, and we need to actually get the adapters in here so that we can mount that bar. So what I did is I found, um, that's actually from one, an expansion bolt in one of my boxes of bolts. And it's perfect, it's like eight millimeter, eight millimeter roughly internal diameter. It was about nine and a half, ten. On the external, so I just put that in the in the drill and span it, and then ran a file across it to take that down to the 
right size. I use an angle grinder to cut to come into rings. So I've got two two rings there. So these rings will go on here. So I've just made them a little bit narrower, as in this way, than the width of the of the um, bar. Now, as you can see, I've already done this one. And then what I've done, so that you don't take this off somewhere out in the forest or whatever, or turn your bar over or put a new chain on it and you lose that ring, I came up with another idea of just putting an O-ring on there. Um, so let me just put the O-ring on this one. And then that, that won't come off in the field somewhere. That row ring won't go over the top of these threads and everything. And then we'll put the bar on and you can see how it looks. I just put the O-ring on the end of there. So that fits over the end of that. Push that down. And then when I, there we are. now the O-ring's on it rather than trying to go across all those threads. So look, if you see that down there, look. You've got that there with the O-ring there. Now that O-ring sits in a little groove on the between the shoulder and there. But the great thing about that is, look, if I get my get my bar here, a second, look. That, there we are. That fits on there nicely. So it goes over that O-ring easy. And that, that bar fits on there nicely, look. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll just put the side cover plate on and bolt that up and you can just see, I'll loosely bolt it up and you'll see how how much tighter that is. Before I do, you can see, look, that fits perfectly in there, the adjuster. Uh, that's in there. The oil, so the oil on the other side is all fine, and that's good to go. Okay, that's our, they're only on there. Look, finger tight. And if you have a look there, look, there's hard. There's, there's a little bit of movement of that bar. So that's all really good to go. So really, really pleased with that. And um, what we'll do now is go and get myself uh, a new new chain. I could take one off another saw, but I can't. I need a chain anyway. And then we can load, we can put this all up and we can go out and test it on um, uh, wood. We're really looking forward to, to use it. So that's basically a 24 inch bar on there. I'm going to get a chain. I will be back. Opened up a new, uh, got a nice new chain out. I can't hold the camera and do this at the same time. So I'm going to put that chain on here. I do like these new, the new chains. I've got a, a link. Yeah, one link's a different colour. So it just lets you know when you sharp your chains where you start and finish from. So I'll put this chain on. All right, so that sits on there nicely now. So now we'll put the side cover on. So just for those that um, are interested in, in the conversion from the large bar mount to the small bar mount, so you know that the oil is there. And basically with these bars, you can adjust them so that the oil is literally just about there, about the middle of that stud there is the end of the oiler uh, slot. So you've got plenty of adjustment for this as this chain gets, uh, that's looser. So this is just a standard 24, 24 inch large mount bar that's been adapted and it's onto the small small mount frame. So there's no problem with adjustment and, and size of chain. So you can just stick with your standard chain. Everything's good to go. Actually, it's all mounted on there. It's a bit of a thing of beauty, isn't it? So um, that's, uh, that's gone on there really well. And if you look, the adjuster, the adjuster's there, so there's loads of room. Now, if you want to get that further back, you're going to have to get yourself a slightly shorter chain. So this is a the standard Husqvarna um, 3.8, 1.5, link chain. But I've noticed, I went online and checked, they do do an 83. They do an 82, which is a skipped, skipped chain. Everyone's missing, or there's two links between them. Or they do an 81. Now I reckon that, I know they're definitely the 83 and probably the 81 would work. So you can fit all sorts of different chains onto this, but this is just the standard one. That's gonna run fine. So then now the thing to do is to go out and find some wood and do some cutting. So the next part will be, let's find a, let's find a log to cut.